Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We're still working on King John and we are in Act 3, Scene 1, kind of regardless of which version of the play you're reading. It's, it's all synced up now. So Constance is very upset that Lady Blanche and Louis the Dauphin are supposed to marry because that leaves her son Arthur out of any sort of potential claim to the throne of England, which she believes he has the most legitimate right to. And keep in mind, France and Austria were originally also backing Arthur. So Constance is upset that this has happened, but she's specifically angry with France and Austria, uh, the King of France and the Duke of Austria, Limoges, um, because they swore that they would fight for Arthur and now this peace has been brokered. And so she's, she's very upset. And she's spent the last couple of our days worth of monologues talking about what a crappy, crappy day today is and how nobody should ever celebrate anything and her woes are so heavy that the only thing that can help support them is the earth itself. And yesterday she let fly that um, like no child born on this day is ever gonna amount to anything good, blah, blah, blah. And the King of France, and uh, real quick, we're gonna hear mostly from Constance. There's just gonna be a tiny bit of Austria in there. So the King of France is like, you know, why, why are you so upset? Haven't I like pledged my majesty to you? And she says, you have beguiled me with a counterfeit resembling majesty, which being touched and tried proves valueless. You are forsworn, forsworn. You came in arms to spill mine enemy's blood, but now in arms you strengthen it with yours. The grappling vigor and rough frown of war is cold in amity, and painted peace and our oppression hath made up this league. Arm, arm, you heavens, against these perjured kings. A widow cries, be husband to me, heavens. Let not the hours of this ungodly day wear out the days in peace, but ere sunset set armed discord twixt these perjured kings. Hear me, oh, hear me. Lady Constance, peace, war, war, no peace. Peace is to me a war. Oh, Limoges. Oh, Austria, thou dost shame that bloody spoil, thou slave, thou wretch, you coward, thou little valiant, great in villainy, thou ever strong upon the stronger side, thou fortune's champion that does never fight but what her humorous ladyship is by to teach thee safety, thou art perjured too, and soothest up greatness. What a fool art thou, a ramping fool, to brag and stamp and swear upon my party. Thou cold-blooded slave, hast thou not spoke like thunder on my side? Been sworn my soldier, bidding me depend upon thy stars, thy fortune, and thy strength. And dost thou now fall over to my foes? Thou wear a lion's hide, doff it for shame, and hang a calfskin on those recreant limbs. So she's not mincing words. She's not holding back with anything here. Um, she, she lets it fly at the King of France saying, you let me down, you were, you came here and you were gonna fight for me and you're not. So she calls upon the heavens to fight on her behalf and to get rid of both France and England. And when Austria tries to calm her down, she really lets fly at him, calls him all these horrible, horrible names and reminds him that he had sworn to fight for Arthur and now here he is on the other side. I mean, I love the, um, thou ever strong upon the stronger side like you he's a he's a fair weather soldier sort of he's going to go on whichever side is is in the front and then the insult at the end of her speech where she says and hang a calf skin on those recreant limbs 
Philip the Bastard thinks that this is like the best thing that has ever been said because as they go on fighting, um, Austria responds to Constance's shaming of him by saying like, if you were a man, I would cut you kind of a thing. So the only thing that's saving her right now is that they don't want to beat up a woman. He's very angry about what she has said. And while he's like sort of responding and threatening back to her, Philip's just sort of like standing there and he's like, and hang a calfskin on those recreant limbs. And hang a calfskin on those recreant limbs. Like he says it a couple times as little interjections and that it comes back throughout the scene, which I kind of love. Like Philip the Bastard is this, he's a character. We'll just say that, he's a character. So anyway, as they're, as they're fighting and Philip the Bastard is loving Constance's turn of phrase, uh, Cardinal Pandolf comes in with a message for King John from the Pope, and we'll hear more about that tomorrow. See you then. Yeah.